Hi, I'm here with uh, Rodolfo Martel, who is a portfolio manager within the scientific group at BlackRock. Welcome, Rodolfo. Thank you. Glad to be here. Uh, Rodolfo, one of the themes that uh, we have been emphasizing here at the Haas School is that uh, virtually every company is now a technology company, uh, or a software company, or a data company. I think it's true in financial services just as much as it's on every other aspect of our daily lives. One of the challenges that we have tackled with, uh, with a lot of enthusiasm, and I would say with success, is how do you do investments in the 21st century? And you cannot do investments in the 21st century using 20th century technologies. So embracing technology, embracing big data. For us in the Scientific Active Equities Group, being based out of San Francisco, where it's the, you know, the epicenter, things are happening, it's actually an advantage in being able to harness the power of these new techniques, big data and whatnot, to incorporate it into, into our investment process. Now, investment management and portfolio management and uh, trading has always been a quantitative field. Uh, but to what extent is data science uh, transformed uh, active equity trading and portfolio management? That's a very interesting question because I think there's a misconception to the level of transformation. It has transformed, but the core remains true to finding good, solid companies. So that core, finding value, finding fundamentally strong companies, remains the same. What has changed is the tools. Whereas you could do it before 20 years ago with a Bloomberg terminal and, and a spreadsheet, gee, Lotus 1, 2, 3 probably back then, or Excel afterwards. Now it's very difficult to find a niche using only those tools. These days you want to use your data scientists to help you find better ways to capture the nuances and the relationships that now we have access to in these massively large uh, data sets existing today. So I think most people understand the ways in which uh, quantitative methods are used for uh, high frequency trading or short term trading. Uh, to what extent has sort of medium term, long term, value based, uh, other forms of active equity trading been affected by data science? Let me give an example. Uh, 20 years ago, if you wanted to get a sense of how sales were doing, there were probably people stationed outside malls with uh, clicker counters, right? Uh, these days we don't do that. These days we can do that and it'll be very slow and inefficient. These days we have access to what is the first thing you do when you buy anything? You usually go online and check the, the reviews, right? You can, uh, so you can actually start monitoring this kind of, of traffic of flows where people actually leave a very strong footprint, digital footprint, mm -hmm. before they go out and actually spend in something. So that's just a tiny example of how uh, having access to understanding mm -hmm. the data out there can actually help go back to answer the fundamentally simple question, if you will, of what companies are going to outdo or, or do better than other companies. So to that extent, the portfolio managers are relying a lot less on the basic accounting data that used to be at the heart of uh, sort of value-based investing. I think we're trying to find ways to complement those. There is something to be said about good old, you know, let's take an example, valuation metrics. Does book to value still work? There are, room, there are places where book to value will still work, right? You want to complement that with many other more sophisticated ways to capture valuation, quality as you mentioned, right? You still want to look at those fundamentals, there is information on it, but you want to complement that with many other data sets that are going to be much more difficult and proprietary to obtain and build, and that's where you're going to get your edge. Now, you're, you're managing at BlackRock, not you personally, but BlackRock manages over $4 trillion. Um, this must imply a massive amount of data. Um, to what extent has storing and retrieving all of this data uh, been a challenge? It's part of uh, embracing 21st uh, century technologies, cloud services. Cloud services all of a sudden allow you to be able to use as much computing capacity and storage capacity as needed without actually having to own it outright, which was one of the problems 10, 12 years ago, right? And it's like, do I have to go buy my hardware, scale it consistently? These days, that part of the equation is pretty much removed. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for inviting me.